Hello and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Swarm3DLasers.com and LightObject.com. We're going to be covering LaserCAD. This is the software that comes with the DSP if you were to purchase that from LightObject. Basically this is the software that will interface between the DSP controller and your laser in hue. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Basically this tutorial is just uh, take a look at the interface, um, some of the basic features, um, setting up some cuts and some engraving capabilities. So let's go ahead and get started. Over here at the left hand side is your uh, basic tool set. Uh, again this, this program has some drawing capabilities in it. Um, here's like a straight line. Um, here's a little pen tool, so this is like a multi-polygon capabilities. It's more like angles. Right mouse click and you can either close it off um, and you can come up here and do an auto close and it'll close it for you. Um, we also have the Bezier tool which is more of a freeform uh, tool. allows you to draw the fancy Beziers. And again, I mean, if you want to monkey around or play with just the, this particular program, you can do some things with it. Um, I typically prefer to use uh, Cut2D or Aspire uh, from the Vetric software uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, comfortable with it, plus uh, it's got some really neat features for uh, cutting uh, intersecting lines. And uh, we'll cover some of that later in another demo. But right now, so these are some of the tools. Uh, these are your, your drawing tools. I'm just hitting Delete. Get rid of it. Um, we also have squares and circles. If you hold your shift key down, or sorry, the control key, it will give you a constrained circle. You can also type in your value. I'm going to hold this down and make this proportion. Right now, where everything is set up in millimeters. Um, if you're not familiar with millimeters, I'd highly use, uh, recommend you get a little converter um, to convert the size, and just so you'll understand what you're converting to. I haven't found anywhere in the preferences yet to convert it to inches, but um, once you start using millimeters, you'll probably like it anyway. So let's make this a 50 by 50 cube square. I can lock up the proportions at that point. So now if I type in anything here, say I want a 300, it'll go. Or we can turn the proportions off and say 300 by 150. And then right here, we can also type in a, an angle value if we want it to snap, rotate to it. It's like 45 each time you keep snapping. So that's kind of helpful. Uh, we also have um, some array tools and some mirror capabilities. Uh, you can mirror horizontally. smooth objects if you bring them in. We have a lot of points and stuff that are associated to it. You can actually smooth it, smooth out the, the edges and stuff, especially if you do an auto outline. Um, we'll take a look at that. We can bring in some pictures and do uh, this create image uh, outlines and stuff. Dithering, image map, invert. Um, these are particular associated with um, uh, when you bring in pictures, like if you want to engrave a photograph or something, we're going to have to set up some of these dithering capabilities to make it look more like a newsprint so that it'll understand what to print. Uh, estimated time, simulations, um, they're all here, but they're also up here in your toolbar as well. So let's go ahead and select this square, and let's say it's off to the side here, and I'd like to go to the center. Down here at the bottom, move to the center of the page. This is uh, this will always save you for getting things lined up too. Um, they do have different types of alignments, different parts of the page. You can snap down here as well. Um, different layers. Uh, you're, if you're wondering what these different colors and stuff are, this allows us to set up different layers. I'm going to make uh, Control C, Control V, and we'll move off and copy. So 
hold the, the arrows keys down if you want to. And get really precise as far as your positioning. Or just grab the center up here when you get your handle, you can pull it. So anyway, let's go back to the layers. I want to grab this one and give it a different color. If you notice over here, we're starting to populate these. Um, and this can also be stretched out a little bit so you can see it better. Different layers, different colors. Um, this way we can give it different parameters, different cuts, different engraving capabilities. Um, so keep setting these up. And let's grab this one here. Give that a dark purple. And we can also select by Let's say we had several of these on top of each other, and you're trying to select them, and you know what layer you're looking for. Tools, and we can do a select by color, and it'll pop up a little dialog box here. So I can select, say, I want the green one, I'll select it. Actually, that was one I had selected. Let's try something else. Select by color. Uh, I want to select the dark purple, and so it automatically highlights it for me. And then I can move it out of the way. Um, if you notice over here again, I, we were populating all these different layers. Um, this one can be a cut at 50% power, and I usually like to maintain the same power around the corner side as the power that I'm using. That way, I won't drop any any edges and stuff out. Um, your speeds, you can. This is where we dial in the speeds. 20 millimeters per second. And again, it, this depends really on what you're cutting. Um, you're either going to have to get some parameters from manufacturers of what, what best feed rates and stuff for different materials are. Um, or even just start doing your own experimentation and start realizing for uh, hardwoods, you know, at a quarter inch I need to go a certain speed with a certain power. Plexiglass, you know, I want to go a little slower. I want to grab that. And again, down here, snap it to the center. Let's take a look at your zoom tools here. You can zoom selected, that bring it all the way up to full frame. You can zoom back, zoom to the entire table. Um, let's take a look here, what we have. You can see your undos, control Z, copy and paste. It's standard, copy, control C, control V. Uh, it's your window standard. Grouping, ungrouping, um, if you grab a hold of these, let's do that, control C, control V and move it off to the side. And I want these two grouped, for instance. Um, we also, let's say we change colors of the layer. And I group these. And now then, I want them to be all one color. You can grab the group and make it a color. And that nullifies the rest of the color selections you had earlier. You download when we go out, out to the shop again. You hit the download button. Um, the, num the name of your, your file will show up. Um, you can either name it, uh, right now we're untitled, just a doc. Um, here's some different um, parameters in here, feed links, feedbacks, um, things if you want to uh, repeat uh, a cut, you can have it drop down, they optimize your gap, uh, optimize groups, as well, auto grouping as well. Save the documents to a, a USB file. Um, where you can actually format your um, software here, the interface and stuff. But be careful that you'll delete any of the work that you have stored inside of your memory. You'll just, um, where you can download them from the from your uh, USB drive. Anyway, so this is this is kind of your your main interface that's going to talk to the laser from LaserCAD. All right, um, I think that's kind of a speedy. Uh, interface overview. Um, we'll take a look at some of the other uh, features like the uh, simulation and time estimates um, and some of the uh, capabilities of bitmaps and, and how we can prep those and get it ready for, uh, for the actual printing from the laser. Anyway, stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back.